Hi everyone, welcome to this short technical demo on the Mules of the iChain project. And we are going to talk about what is possible. What can you achieve using the different connectors of the Mules of the iChain project and its capabilities. So we are going to talk about chat completions, switching between models. If you are building your agents, what is possible? So parameterization aspect, token governance is important, prompt decoration, toxicity detection, on input and on output of uh, the LLM and how you can build knowledge and perform RAG, um, dynamic tooling and token usage. So we are not going to look at it from the implementation point of view, but we have built something called the Agent Builder UI, uh, built by Michel Bosniak, and we are going to look at it. And to demonstrate, I will use this animation where we are going to first focus on the chat completion pass and a little bit of governance around it. And then we go into a more specific area. So let's continue. If you want to connect to any LLM provider, um, you will use one of these four connectors, Muse of the iChain, Inferience, Bedrock or Einstein um, of the Mac project are available. They will allow you to connect to uh, these different LLM providers uh, and their foundational models, they work on a prompt which they receive from a system of record or engagement or even a chat UI. And you can then govern now the prompt itself. Uh, basically, all of these connectors provide the ability to fine tune and configure uh, the specific configurations like uh, token generation, input, output. You can have temperature uh, definition defined there. So it's quite, quite extensive. And you can use these parameterization to further fuel from the API management uh, possibilities Mules of this providing and build LLM policies to uh, in combination with these uh, fine tuning configurations. Um, same works on the output side. Again, you can um, define those policies with checks on some of those conditions. Uh, Einstein connector comes up with this trust layer and toxicity detection out of the box, but you can implement the same using the other connectors. So let's take a look how uh, this looks when you're building an agent. So I am here on the agent UI and you can see this agent UI is pretty simple. I have a chat window here and I have some model selected here. So I can say I have one model and I would chat now with this model. So let's say uh, what is the capital of Switzerland? This should be easy. It's burn. Okay. That's nice. And I can copy the question, but now I can switch between models Yeah, Bet between models in the same LLM provider. We have just exposed a few of those. And also here two uh, LLM providers are exposed to this UI, but you can switch between all the supported ones. And I will go for Mistral, small latest, ask the same question, and you will see slight difference in the way it is responding. And that's yeah, typical Mistral. It comes up with a more detailed answer. Uh, that's already cool. So what I can do as a next step, let's go. I've been switching between models. So let me go back to the uh, OpenAI GPT 4.0. And we can also do some generation settings. Like I don't want the user to have more than one token, which is not good, but you can define a number of token. That's the purpose of the demo, which will then be active. And you can see input token exceed allowed number of prompt tokens. So this is where the LLM interaction will not take place because you are not fitting into the purpose of the input token. So you can increase this. You have the temperature you can play around here with. So this is fully configurable. Um, let me ask the same question. I think it should be the same answer. Um, if it comes back, let me wait for a second. Okay, here you go. Uh, actually, in this question, there's not much variety, but let's again ask with a different uh, temperature. So the temperature for this specific question doesn't really matter, but let's say I limit the output tokens and I will limit it to, let's say, three tokens. Yeah? And if I ask the same question, you will see the capital of uh, Switzerland is Bern. It just replied with the capital of because these are three words, three token for the LLM. And now that's a common misunderstanding. You should think, okay, maybe the LLM will reply only with burn, but that's for majority of models, not 
the case, you have to really decorate the prompt. And that's uh, where we now can discuss the prompt decoration. You have pre and post decoration possibilities where you can now say uh, reply in one word and then ask the same question. And you will see it will then say it's burn. So that's now we have governed our uh, agent by decorating prompts around it, um, which are fully parameterized. Um, and now we can look into some additional capabilities like toxicity detection. So if I come up here with, let's say, um, you are fat, you are fat and ugly. So that's a toxic text and toxic text you can block, right? So you don't need to spend cost on it, token on it. So LLM interaction in this case is canceled as a configuration in this agent. You can configure as you like, uh, send it to a cheaper model, whatever. Um, that's on the input, right? So we have also something on the output where you can say, okay, I, how can I generate a toxic answer from uh, the LLM, I can ask it to give me an example, give me an example of a toxic text. And of course, it will uh, follow my instructions and will come up certainly. Okay, now I have this limitation. Let me just say, you see there is no toxicity detected, but let's, because it was cut out and we are just taking the response itself. But here you can see, certainly it's important to understand Okay, so now you see you are stupid and was this? So it's argue first why it should not be, but then it kind of gives me that example and we have here a, a rating. We have just exposed four categories. There are more available based on different uh, moderation models, but that's how it can easily be leveraged uh, in toxicity detection. And um, with that, we quickly go back to our presentation and see what's next. So here we have already built our agent with LLM integration and have connected a little bit of governance around it. We can uh, manage the tokens, we can uh, enable toxicity, we can do prompt decoration, uh, which is already very powerful. Now let's take a look on the knowledge, how we are going to build knowledge. And for knowledge, you need vector databases. In this demo, we have vector databases behind the scenes, but we are not exposing them uh, in front. So um, how you work with vector databases, you take unstructured data, ingest it into your vector DB to build that knowledge. This unstructured data can come also from a website. Uh, we are going to see both examples. And then instead of sending the query directly to the LLMs through the connector, you first send the query to the vector DB, retrieve only relevant data, and enrich the prompt with the relevant data. And then you get a more contextual answer here. And that's what we are going to see right now. Um, we are going to just see, make sure everything is fine here. So let me now first create a knowledge base. Let's say we have a demo knowledge base. Yes. Demo is created. And I can ask now into the demo knowledge base, what is agent force? Now let's write it correctly agent force let's see what it answers um, based on the model it can come up with something and you see it is answering something which is not really uh, true um, so i'm looking for the agent force of salesforce um, and i want first of all um, the agent to not reply if the knowledge base is empty or does not contain any references, I don't want it to reply. That's where I can set it to enable grounded responses only. It means if it doesn't find the answer in the knowledge base, it won't reply. So let's say, uh, what is agent force? And I'll copy it because you're going to need it. And it should say the question couldn't be answered based on my knowledge. And now the agent is grounded to that specific knowledge store. And now, can, now I can come here and ingest some data. So I would like to take this agent force website and describe to the agent what the agent force solution does. So I can enter it here and say the store to ingest the data from the web is demo. I crawl over it 
And once I crawled, I can take the question, ask again, and the grounded responses are selected. So it should now come up with a more dedicated answer. What is Agent Force? Based on the knowledge available. That's pretty cool. It gives me even references about the text it used. So that's amazing. I can ask who created Agent Force because I want to know. Um, let's see. And now I've started to chat with the with the website, right? So this is because we have ingested this level of the website into our knowledge base, we are able to chat with it right now. Um, the next thing what I can do is um, probably in the same, but let's go to another one. Uh, I will create a new knowledge store called products. And in this knowledge store, I'm going to ingest a file. And the file is made up fake product. Let me quickly show this fake product to you. So the fake product is here. Fake product description. You can see here, this is just a made up product. And I'm going to ingest this into uh, the knowledge store in the new one and then chat with the document. Let's see how this works. So I can come here, open it, go to the file, select the file, select the knowledge store in demo. And now I can upload it. It's done. Now I can ask what is Mule TXY Pro? And you will see, it will say, I cannot answer the question. Should probably say, because I'm in the wrong knowledge store, right? So if I go into the right knowledge store and ask a question, and here you can see how you can switch between the different vector uh, collections and indexes to get that question answer for you. So now you can see it's answering the question. I can also ask an additional question like, uh, does Mule TX why pro support noise cancellation cancellation and now it should say yes or no yes it does and we saw it on the website uh, on the on the pdf document it supports noise cancellation uh, what are the ai features the ai features for mule t x y so now it should list me all the AI features on for that specific product. So that's a good way to chat now with your documents and build a dedicated knowledge bases for your agents. So that's for the knowledge side. And the next one on our agenda is the tooling. Because we have certain tools available, we should be able to leverage those. Um, and I have a tool available. Actually, it is the, I think it should be here. Um, let me enter here SAP. SAP demo, that should be it. That's the right one. And we are going to access SAP right now. Let me just show you the area we are going to look at. And this is probably the area stock overview for mule test zero and 3000 is my plant i want to get this information um, by assigning a tool to my agent and that's the purpose here right so you build your agent with knowledge bases and so on and then you have the possibility to give it real-time access to your system of records based on different apis you have built and these apis are fully secured and so on so we are going to look at this exactly how you can deliver on this uh, promise. So we have here the ability to add additional tools. And let's go here. So the tooling part is here. Currently, if I retrieve the tools, you see the tools are empty. I can add tools. But before I add tools, I need to check that this, this uh, transaction is available via API. So let me go here into my Postman collection. This is for, for a different purpose. Now let me go to the bottom where I have my SAP stuff inventory and I can see here's an API which I can call. And this API is replying me exactly what I'm looking for. It is replying me with the 
with the quantity available for the specific product and that's what i need to use um, i have here already this agent configuration so this is the pattern you define your tool you have different parameters fields you describe the tool come up with a query describe what the llm should be doing and this is the tool we are going to paste now into um, the agent so let me just quickly edit here and now if i ask the question let's say check inventory for mule test zero and it should now access the tool and reply to me um, what the inventory is for that specific product and you see it got that inventory directly from sap this is the inventory it has retrieved i should have probably done before the um, the the question uh, so it's not able to answer it but that's how you can dynamically upskill your agents to support a certain uh, tool and last but not least we have also the voice capabilities uh, where we can now apply speech to text and text to speech use cases here um, and this is simply done also i will just quickly uncheck the grounded responses and here i have the possibility to ask a question you see the mic what is the capital of switzerland and it should potentially reply back very soon uh, what the capital of Switzerland is. So you didn't hear this, but let me uh, enable this. No, I didn't uh, enable sound, so probably you didn't hear it, but that's actually what you can do using voice. You can ask a question and it will reply to you and even speak to you, which was not part of this uh, demo. Uh, and with that, you have already a good foundation to build any type of agents um, using the Muse of the iChain project. And uh, yeah, uh, enjoy this.